Now, what have we got here? Woohoo! Light bulbs and resistors. Hey, welcome to the RC Adventure Channel, everybody. So, if you ever wanted to put lights on your RC car, truck, plane, boat, or whatever that you could control from your transmitter without spending a fortune on one of those lighting kits that's out there, well, you can. Check it out. All you're going to need is an old servo, uh, specifically the board inside it. The rest of the servo can be trashed, motor burned up, gears stripped out, that sort of, you know, all kinds of things can be wrong with it. But as long as the board is good, that's all you're going to need out of there. That's why I never get rid of a servo until I know for sure that everything in it is trashed because I can <laughs> recycle it into other things. You'll, of course, need LEDs and resistors to go with them, and I'll cover more on the resistors here in just a minute. Wire, heat shrink tubing, a little bit of CA, solder and soldering iron, your standard RC car toolkit, and last but not least, you may need a multimeter. I'm going to start by ripping apart the old servo. If you can center up the arm beforehand, cool. If not, no big deal. This little guy right here appears to be the centering pot on this servo. I'm just going to find the middle on it, put it pretty close. doesn't have to be perfect. Apparently there was a time that I thought I was never going to take this servo apart. Once the board is out of the servo, we're going to want to adjust the centering pot to be as close to center as practical. Easiest way to do that would be to plug it into a powered up receiver, power up your transmitter, center up whatever channel that it's plugged into, and then adjust the pot until the motor stops spinning or if you've already removed the motor, your voltmeter says that there's no voltage at the motor connection terminals. Once you've done that, you're just going to take a small drop of CA, or it could be epoxy or whatever, and then freeze up that pot switch as best you can. Once your glue is good and set up and the pot won't move anymore, the board is now ready to accept the lighting system. First, we need to pick out the components though, so let's go do some chopping. I get my LEDs from superbrightleds.com, but there's a number of other sources, uh, DigiKey, Radio Shack, if they still exist, that sort of thing. Uh, You'll want to go to the through hole section of the component LEDs, and there's a couple of things to consider here. The diameter, five millimeters, really common, works well for like most tenth scale, eighth scale kind of cars. Uh, most uh, I've used it on fifth scale airplanes, so it's good for that. Uh, if you're going with a, like a micro crawler, you'll want to look for a three millimeter. That's a, a pretty common, smaller size. There's also eight millimeter if you wanted something that big. Uh, but I've not used any of those yet. Another thing to consider here is the viewing angle, number of degrees, in this case 360. You know, it's really wide beam, but there's some down here. Uh, you should be able to find, yeah, see this one's got a 15 degree viewing angle. So this would be a really good one for a headlight on a vehicle, but if you're talking like a turn signal, or maybe a, uh, the flashing beacon on an airplane, you'll want to get something with a really wide angle, like one of those 360s that we saw earlier. Once you found a bulb that you like, there's two specifications that we need to figure out here. The continuous forward current, 30 milliamps in this case, and the forward voltage of 3.4 volts for this bulb but it will vary depending on the bulb. It'll vary even between colors, so make sure you look at it for each bulb you're, you're using. Then go on over to your favorite LED calculator. Uh, there's several out there on the internet, but uh, I'll include a link in the description for this one if you want it. You'll enter the power supply voltage. In this case, they call it the voltage drop, but it's forward voltage, the same thing. Then the LED's continuous current rating, and we scroll down, and once you hit design circuit, comes up with this nice big drawing that even a blind person like me can read and I know I need a 91 ohm resistor. You'll probably want something with a little bit more than that. Maybe go with about 100 ohm in this particular example. A uh, little extra will preserve the life of the LED and if you ever get any voltage spikes in the system uh, they're less likely to damage your, your bulbs. Once you got all the parts in hand you can start soldering. It 
one quick note about soldering on LEDs. The diode inside does not like heat, so when you solder on it, go really quick and then get the heat off. Also, when you're attaching the resistors to the LEDs, it doesn't matter which side they're going on since this is just a current limiting resistor. And there we go. Well, the super basic for demonstration purposes only lighting setup is ready for testing. You'll notice that I have three LEDs in parallel. That's because I'm actually going to be using this on an airplane that I'm working on and I wanted the nav lights to be really bright. Also, the three resistors in series was done this way because uh, I just wanted to buy one type of resistor and then daisy chain as many together as was needed for each individual spot. Uh, you can use a single resistor and it would be just fine as long as it has enough resistance. Anyway, enough talking about it. Let's see if we can let some smoke out of the wires. I'm borrowing my car over here to plug in at channel 3 and everything's powered up so when I flip the switch there we go we get two bright green lights and a bright blue light hmm. well I mean it's working um, I'm kind of curious as to why there's a blue light mixed in there. Somebody must have goofed. Oh well. <laughs> totally wasn't me. Definitely I would never do that. <laughs> with just a simple Y harness I could plug this into the throttle channel so these would come on with the brakes. If you're finding that they're coming on when you want them to be off or off when you want them to be on, all you have to do is reverse these two wires because what's actually happening here is I'm flipping the switch on and off it's not turning power on and off, it's just reversing the polarity of it. So if you're working with something that uh, you can't have reverse polarity going to, you'll need to install a diode in there, which is really easy to do. Uh, it's just like soldering in one of these resistors. Make sure you get the polarity right, though. Uh, you can also get blinking LEDs. I've got some white ones. I've also seen some red ones. Pretty sure you can get amber, probably any color you want in, in that blinking flavor. And, you know, you could probably make some turn signals that, out of that just by wiring the two sides you know, uh, into the same spot, but, you know, with the polarities opposite, so it powers one or the other. And then I think if you get that centering pot just right, it should be able to work so that uh, uh, when your steering is centered, that uh, you won't uh, have either of the side blinking. The main thing though is just experiment. Try things out. See what you can come up with. You know, it's just a broken servo. You're probably going to throw it in the trash until you saw this video. These bulbs were, uh, I want to say, 60 or 70 cents a piece. The resistors were like 20 cents a piece. The wire, I don't even know how much the wire costs. I got that a long time ago. But it's only a few cents per foot. So this stuff's all pretty cheap. Uh, See what you can come up with and uh, let me know in the comments down below. But hey, anyway, if you want to see more like this, uh, go ahead and check out my Facebook page. I put all kinds of little tips and tricks on there and things that don't make it into the videos, behind the scenes stuff on occasion, that sort of thing. Uh, if you did like this video, uh, I'd appreciate a thumbs up or a comment. It feeds the YouTube algorithm, which really helps me out quite a bit. If you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you want to know when the next one's up and ready to watch, that's what the bell icon's for. And until next time, remember, you're not having fun until you break something.